he went through the course outside and in this lecture uh, we need to talk about the engineering profession that is the one that discusses the, the difference between science and engineering and then the role of engineers elements of professionalism engineering misconceptions uh, different branches of engineering etc so that is what we are going to be covering today uh, in our lecture number two and our lecture starts here so you observe that uh, the first thing is to determine what an engineer does and we are going to be defining engineering shortly uh, but the first thing is to is to differentiate between the, the engineer and the science. An engineer applies knowledge of mathematics and physical sciences to the efficient design and construction of usable devices, structures, and processes. So the, the, the first item that uh, that strikes out in terms of the difference between engineer and scientist is the application of knowledge. Whereas uh, the scientist, a primary goal is the expansion of knowledge. They try to understand Start the physical phenomenon or the physical processes, and uh, so the, uh, what you'll see is that engineers make things or design things like devices, structures, processes, machines, etc. So you'll find mechanical engineers, software, uh, software engineers, electrical engineers, etc. They all make new designs or make new products, whereas the scientists normally studies the physical phenomenon. Like they will try to find out why does an apple fall from a tree and goes down and are not going up. Other things like uh, why the sun lies in the morning and go down uh, in the evening, etc. So these are the, the major differences between the engineer and the scientist. So one of them is making things, designing things from their knowledge. They apply mathematics and physical sciences. So what the scientists have studied, that is uh, what engineers use now to make life better. So uh, that was more of an introduction of the role of engineer and the scientist. And as you can see in this diagram, uh, this, this engineer is actually coming up with some, some design. It might be a machine, but this guy is just observing what are the forces that are involved when you are sliding down a rope or a hill, etc. Then we ask ourselves, what is a profession? And we say now that a profession requires a specialized and high uh, or require specialized and highly skilled knowledge such, such that you cannot call uh, a mechanic probably a profession because they learned their skills on the job they just went they were shown how to open an engine and uh, they, they started seeing how engines work and then they learned so that is not what we call a profession a profession requires you to go sit down among us the people who have learned or class you are taught you learn some highly specialized skills that you would not or ordinarily obtain just by watching or just by doing, by doing trial and error. It requires you to do a detailed gathering of knowledge. So that is the first characteristic of a profession. And number two is that it requires an academic training. Uh, so you have to go to school, sit down, taught, exposed to, uh, to different aspects of the, of the career or the, or the profession. And therefore you end up being trained. And that is what you are doing. And we are saying that now, um, that the second uh, characteristic of a profession is that it requires academic training, and I say that is why you are you are have joined the university. We are giving some academic knowledge, and that is why engineering is classified as a profession. But if you just uh, join your neighborhood uh, foodie who teaches how to make uh, a dress, they will ordinarily yes give you some skills, but they are not very really academic. They are just hard on skills. So that that is not not necessarily a profession. But it is still a skill that uh, can, can benefit. So that is why engineering is not taught uh, on the street. It is taught in a classroom that you get to know uh, the professional way of uh, building systems or building uh, devices. Uh, that, and there is a code of ethics that is followed uh, by the engineering profession. So we say that, then you're saying that uh, the profession is always regulated by a professional body. And uh, engineering board of Kenya is uh, the professional body that regulates the practice of engineers in Kenya and even in the world wide there is another body that regulates uh, the way this engineering is done and therefore we are saying that every profession you might also hear of other professions that regulate uh, other professions probably the one that comes directly to mind right now is the accounting uh, profession and there is a body that regulates uh, the, the accountants and how they 
plan their affairs, how they conduct their business. And therefore, if, if a career is not uh, regulated, then you might observe that it may not be able to, uh, to attain the highest requirements of a profession. There is always an examination of competence uh, for you to qualify to, to attain the profession that you have been seeking. So there is always an exam that is associated with uh, uh, with every profession and that uh, assesses your competence. The other characteristic of profession is that it is vital society and so it plays a very huge role in society and you cannot ignore what engineers do. So if you think of it, if you never had if you never had electrical engineers, so to speak, uh, like you are, uh, we will not be having power. Uh, the power that, that is powering your devices, the one that you use to see your light, to see the light at night, the one that runs the motors to make machines run, all that. So you can and definitely see and agree with me that profession is very important and very vital to society. So you cannot do uh, without a profession. The other thing is that you observe that uh, compensation is normally higher than other occupations. So we are not saying that one occupation always has higher uh, remunerations or, or, or salaries than other, but you see that generally any profession that is uh, regulated that meets these, these characteristics that we are mentioning always pays higher than the, the one that you run on, on the street. So if you want, if you are, you want to learn uh, how to create uh, face hair for your peers, you go and you are shown by your friends how to create a hair. Within one week or one month, you have learned. That it might be a profession, quote and quote, but it does not qualify among us uh, the characteristics that you are mentioned. Therefore, it is a skill you have gained. It is good to give you some money, but it may not uh, provide as a uh, good vision as a uh, uh, professional uh, career. So that is another characteristic of profession. And uh, lastly, is that it enforces very high standards of legal and ethical conduct. So you observe that all engineers observe some uh, some standards that have been set out by the bodies that regulate the career. And even all the others, even the accountants, the architects, uh, among others, the doctors are always following some standards that have been set out uh, for for them by their by their professional uh, regulator. These are the first uh, few characteristics that characterize an, uh, a profession. And therefore, you cannot call yourself an engineer unless you have met each of these.